forward to the cloud. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome uh, on behalf of Dolphin Computer Access. I'm MJ, um, and I'm here with my colleague from Bookshare, Laura, Laura Ronberg, and we're just super excited to have everyone. We've had a record um, amount of registrations today. Nearly 500 people have registered for this webinar. Um, so as you can imagine, a lot of questions are going to come in. What we're going to purposefully pause at some natural stopping areas um, to field some questions. If you can please use the question and answer box, we've shared how to do that um, and not the chat box just because it's easier that way. Um, anything else housekeeping wise, Lara? I think that's good. Oh, let me post the link yet again. Uh, one more thing, here's a cheat sheet that we've created for you. So if you would like to um, open that up, it is going to be helpful. We've created this cheat sheet, and it has this really cool, helpful diagram. It will help you follow along if, in case you have not in advance downloaded the Easy Reader app. Um, many of you are brand new, and you want to know how to download it, so that's fine. The other thing we'd like to say is no matter where you are, we hope you're safe, we're sheltering in place, and we wish the best for your family and yourself. So without further ado, we have a lot to share. Um, we're, I'm gonna hand it over to Lara Romberg from Bookshare. Thank you, let me just share my screen here. Okay, great. So thank you all for attending to learn more about um, Bookshare and how it works with Dolphin Easy Reader. Um, it's one of the tools that we recommend to our users all the time and we have great feedback from our users. So you'll get a little overview of Bookshare and then how it works with Dolphin. Um, someone had said that they were completely new to Bookshare. Uh, we're not going to be going into the full in-depth overview of everything you can do with Bookshare, but um, at the end you'll have my email and contact information and feel free to reach out if you're a very new user and just getting started. So the problem is that printed text doesn't work for all learners. About 5% of students experience some barrier to reading and interacting with a printed textbook. Um, yet, you know, they need the same content as their classmates. They need it at the same time. Um, Many school districts have switched to sort of digital books and online learning plat platforms, but a lot of the digital books that are out there are not accessible. Um, for people with visual impairments that use a screen reader, they might not be formatted for the screen reader to read things in order. Um, they're, maybe they just need a larger print, a larger font, they can't do that. Uh, so digital does not mean accessible. So this is where Bookshare comes in. We're an ebook library of fully accessible books um, that makes reading easier for people with reading barriers, a dyslexia, blindness or a visual impairment, and a physical disability uh, like cerebral palsy where you can't hold a book, turn the pages. So with Bookshare, you can listen to books, just the audio file. You can see, hear the audio and see the text um, highlighted as it's reading can increase the font to a very large type. Um, all the books are available in Braille files. All the books are also available in um, certain uh, DAISY files that work with certain um, soft assistive technology software devices or hardware devices that uh, might be used in the school. So every title is available in several different formats that uh, fit the need of the user. We have over 817,000 titles in our collection and add a couple thousand each month. We have textbooks, pleasure reading books, you know, fiction, nonfiction, periodicals, newspapers of every major city, magazines, a lot of career you know, upskilling books, um, adult education related. Um, we have the, the driver's license manuals for uh, every state. So, it's a really wide range of books. A lot of the supplemental materials that come along with textbooks, um, books organized uh, by Lexile level and leveled readers um, that many teachers are using. Um, and best of all, it is free for qualified US students. Um, we are funded by the US Department of Education Office of Special Education Programs. And um, 
free. That's K-12, post-secondary, adult education programs, you know, vocational rehabilitation programs, any type of education program where you, um, you know, are either going to get a grade or a pass fail or for credit um, that is you're taking to either advance your career or learn a new career, um, so forth like that. So even when, and then when the person is no longer a student, it's $50 a year for unlimited downloads. And there's a lot of different ways to read our books, which we'll go over some of those. Um, and many are, are free or low cost. So who qualifies? This is something um, we get asked a lot. Uh, we follow copyright law. So it's not, we're not under IDEA or special education law. We follow, there's an amendment in the copyright law that say people who are blind have a visual impairment or perceptual or reading disability or a physical disability that prevents them from reading printed works to the same degree as someone without that disability um, or can't hold a book or focus their eyes the way a person normally would. Um, that's what the qualifications are based on. And that's determined by what the law states as a competent authority. And that's someone with professional experience to evaluate someone and determine, yes, this person has a reading disability like dyslexia. So that can be the special ed teacher, a you know, physical therapist, occupational therapist, you know, uh, an ophthalmologist can you know, certify, you know, a student has a, you know, a visual impairment. Uh, or blind, or you know, a medical doctor, or a school psychologist that has evaluated a, a student and determined that they have a, a reading disability. So uh, the, the determination is left up to the professionals. Uh, we take their word that you know, they, they have evaluated the student somewhere along the way and have determined that they meet one of these criteria. Uh, we don't require any medical documentation to be sent from us. We ask like when you're signing, when you're signing up your students, you're checking a box saying I attest that the student has this disability and that's it. There's two main type, uh, account types. There's the organization account and that's primarily you know, maybe based in a school or a group home or rehabilitation facility, but the uh, teachers create the account. They add their students who qualify and they assign the books to the students. Students then log in and find the books the teacher has assigned and read the books. Now they can only read books that the teachers have assigned to them. So we have, you know, over 800,000 titles, but they can just read the books that are assigned to them. We have an individual membership type as well. Um, and that can be either just on its own or it can be tied to the school account. So what happens with that is the parent is the one that um, if it's not tied to the school account, the parent signs the student up and so then they do have to submit some type of proof of disability signed by a doctor or a you know, reading specialist or occupational therapist of that sort. And um, then they can read any, any book in the full collection. You know, they want to read Harry Potter, they want to read the books that all their friends are reading. So what we really encourage is that once the student is on the school account, they also get the individual uh, membership. It's you know, still free. And when they're already on the school account, the parent doesn't have to provide any, any uh, formal disability form. And it really helps encourage students to read you know, books that they want to read for fun. It's not just they're having to read their textbook. Uh, but you know, these are read students who have you know, struggled with reading, probably hate it. Um, and over time, if they can read fun books and things that they're interested in, can really develop a lifelong love of reading. So, you know, I've mentioned these individual memberships um, and there's two ways. The teachers can initiate it. Uh, they do something on their end, an email is sent to the parents, the parents then have to click on that link and complete the form online and then the student has the full access. Um, and a, kind of another method that we're really promoting now that kids are not in school and might not have access to the teachers is if the student already has a school account, um, they log in onto you know, bookshare.org and, and I can show you this later, but there's a link that says upgrade to full membership and the parent selects that and the parent just you know, completes the information and attests that they're the parent or legal guardian. And then the student you know, right away has the individual membership and can read any book. And so especially in these times when we don't know when kids are gonna go back to school, uh, 
you know, how much access to content they have, the individual membership is really a great way too. And you know, parents can go on and select books. A lot of parents are homeschooling now that have never done it before. Uh, so that's just another, another option for um, getting more content to these kids. There's many different ways to read the books. You can read on Chromebooks or computers. We offer a basic web reader that the book just opens in the browser and it has the synchronized audio and hi word highlighting. Dolphin makes a Windows-based program. Um, there's Capti Voice. Also, all of our books can be downloaded in just a standard Word format. Now, obviously, you're not going to get the audio with that unless you have built-in uh, screen reading software. But uh, some teachers, just for a kid that maybe needs larger font, they can download the book in the Word format and just you know, copy all the text and make it larger. So you know, that's not requiring any, any other tools or equipment. Um, maybe a teacher just wants one couple chapters out of a book, they can just cop, cop, copy and paste that and um, have it that way. There's apps for iPads and iPhones and Android devices. Um, Dolphin Easy Reader is a free app, um, iPads and iPhones, and also available on Android. Um, iBooks, which is standard on Macs, um, you can read books in iBooks, either on Mac computers and the mobile devices. Capti Voice is another, um, has an app as well for, uh, for mobile devices, and Voice Dream Reader is another one that um, has great features as well. So uh, you know, I think more and more of our users are using mobile devices. Uh, so uh, it's just lots of different options, ranging from you know, free to low cost. Um, I have a link on the slide, and you guys will get a copy of the presentation. We have a reading tool wizard on our site where you select what kind of device or devices you have. And then we kind of guide you through, OK, if, you have a, if you're using a Chromebook, here's the two tools we think work best with Chromebook. If you're using an iPhone, here are the apps that we recommend. Um, so if you're not quite sure what's the best way to read the book, um, we kind of start with what devices you have and go from there. We have a lot of information of help and support, um, both on our website and in person. We have a help center, that's you know, bookshare.org, CMS slash help center, that has answers to Lots and lots of different, you know, frequently asked questions. You can search by topic. We have an educators get started guide um, that kind of walks you through signing up for the account to adding members, adding other teachers as sponsors and assigning books and reading books. We have ton of videos and how to guides that have screenshots and screenshots and step by step um, information about how to go about doing um, pretty much everything on Bookshare. We have separate guides. And we also have a phone number that is staffed by people Monday through Friday, nine to five Pacific time, um, and an email, bookshare.org slash contact us, um, where you can write in with questions and they're usually answered within a day. We also have Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube accounts, so look for us there. We, we post links to our blog posts there, um, st user stories, um, new updates, so just another way to to keep informed with what we're doing. I have some, yep, I have questions. Okay, sure. Okay, so we have a variety of questions. Um, Angelina, uh, we're gonna have to do tech support outside of this, although I, I just wanna acknowledge that you said you're having trouble with the download. Um, we can figure that out uh, after the session or in an email that will give you our contact information. Um, students, this is from Sarah Shacker. Students who qualify for SPED under other health impairments often need specially designed instruction for reading comprehension. Um, do those types of students get access to Bookshare? Uh, if there's, if they have an actual barrier to reading that's a learning or reading disability, uh, that's not whether it's related to their health impairment or not. Um, and again, that's where we leave it up to you, to the competent authorities, that if there's something, um, there is some barrier, and it's not just that they're reading below grade level or that English isn't their first language. Um, if there's something that in the evaluation, the student is really struggling with reading and not uh, able to comprehend or learn to read, then that would qualify. 
Um, okay. This is a CELA question. CELA is the library in Canada. You're aware, Lara. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that to have access to Bookshare in addition to CELA collections, there's an application process. Can yes. you clarify? Yeah, so CELA is uh, one of our partners. Um, we have library partners around the world. We've been working with them for, a few, for several years now. Um, member people who, first you have to become a member of the CELA library and I believe there's hundreds throughout Canada. Um, and in, when they're signing up, you get to be a patron of one of those libraries and then you get free access to Bookshare once you're the patron. So you need to contact your local CELA library and I think it's CELA.ca is their website and you can go and search by your province. Um, so, and the librarians or the staff at the library um, will take care of both the CELA membership and the Bookshare membership. And CELA then covers the cost of the membership. Okay, uh, Valerie or Valeria Calderon, uh, I'm a vision teacher. I just opened a teacher account for my K and grade one blind kids. I'm stuck as what is best to do now. Um, I, I, um, if you haven't set up your class, I can answer from the dolphin side. We're gonna we're gonna talk to you about how to get your students' accounts. Um, well, I mean, Lara's already kind of giving you an overview about uh, getting set up. Yeah, so if you start, if you create an account, then you have to add, next is to add the students, your students that need access to the books. So when you log into your account and you're on your My Bookshare page, there's a members link and then there's an add member button and you just, you know, fill out a form pops up and you have to enter the student's name, birth date, grade, uh, whether it's a visual learning or physical disability, whether they have an IEP and fi or 504, which you, just, you do not need for Bookshare, but we just keep, just for uh, tracking purposes for the Department of Ed, they wanna know how many of the members, um, and many of our members do have an IEP or a 504, but it's not required. So just go on, you know, log into your account and start setting up your, your roster by adding your students who qualify. Uh, what about when a teacher, this is for Joe Gutcher, uh, what does a teacher do when he or she transfers to a new organization? Do the students automatically transfer to another sponsored teacher within the original organization? Does the teacher need to set up a new account with the new organization? What happens? Yeah, the teacher has to, so you can only be in our system one time, so you have to be deleted from the old school and then added to the account at the new school. And then the, the students stay on, unless the students are changing schools too, they just stay on the account. And then whoever is um, going to be working with those students, um, if they're not already on the account, needs to be added as a sponsor on the account. But you do have to be physically you know, deleted from and uh, deleted from one account added to another and whoever is the primary contact of the account can delete the other teachers and then when you go to the new school you would contact whoever oversees that account and ask them to add you. Um, can, can students or can people be logged into multiple devices or just one? Multiple, yeah, it doesn't matter. Same with on the easy reader side, so yes. I have Bookshare, have not used it in a very long time. How do I get back started with my students now? Oh, Probably needs to upgrade to an admin account. No, and if they're already, in, if you're a teacher and you have an account, just log in. Um, if you don't remember your password, there's a forgot password link, you know, right at, at the login field. And then you'll get an email from Bookshare where you can reset your password. And um, here's a great question. What if um, the teacher doesn't have an account or doesn't want to set up an account? Um, then my daughter can't get access to textbooks or can they, if they have an individual account, can they get access to textbooks? Yeah, they can still get, ac they can still get access to textbooks. Um, there's a subset of textbooks that are in the NIMAC, the National Instructional Materials Access Center. So under special education law, every textbook has to be made available digitally. Um, however, since it is 
under special education law and not copyright law, only students with IEPs can have access to those textbooks. So we have a huge range of textbooks, but we don't have everyone. And um, so if the, if the student um, has an IEP, they have access to every textbook, um, but if not, but so if the teacher doesn't want to create an account, the parent can create the individual membership for the student and still have access to the books. Cool. Okay, I'll do uh, my part if you wanna stop sharing your screen. All right. How's the camera looking? Looks Pretty good. clear? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so um, we're gonna kind of assume from this part in the webinar going forward that you've signed up for a Bookshare account, you're all set. So you've done all that work that Lara has just talked about and now you're ready to start reading books in Easy Reader. So, um, but before that, you're gonna need to download Easy Reader. So you can go to Google Play or the Apple Store and just search for Easy Reader, E-A-S-Y-R-E-A-D-E-R, -E -E Easy Reader. So download the app to your device. Um, students will then sign in to your Dolphin account using the, the these are for students who have school accounts. Um, so sign into your Dolphin account using the either the school email or the login information that you've been given by the school. They will have created a Dolphin account for you. Um, if you're a new user or a home user, you can, uh, the first time after you download the app, you're gonna be asked to create a Dolphin account using any email. Um, when you set up your Dolphin account for the first time, you're gonna get an email uh, sent to that email address that you're using and it's gonna ask you to confirm uh, you know, setting up that account and you have seven days to do that. So if there's any teachers out there who have not set up their students and you're like, well, what if my students don't have email? That's okay too. You can email us, Dolphin, which I'll give you the address, um, the email address. You can email us and request, um, say, 10 users or however many students you have in your classroom that you need to uh, set, set an account for. And we'll just set up some dummy accounts and we'll give that back to you. Um, we'll give you a account login and password. So uh, if you need to do that, we, we do it all the time, ranging from 20 to some districts have requested three, 400. So um, those are those big districts all using Bookshare. Okay, so if you have not had a chance to look at the cheat sheet that we uh, posted for you, uh, it's right here in your Zoom webinar chat box. And if you want to open that, you can uh, check out the cool little uh, sort of screen guide that we've created that'll identify all the buttons on on the on the Easy Reader screen for you, so that you can navigate and move around in case you forget after we get done with this webinar. If you're like me, you'll forget it by tomorrow. So you'll have this cheat sheet, and that shows you. Um, what to do with the book cover button, um, our side menu button, how to search, how to change uh, from a list to a title view, how to sort your books, and then how to get information about books. So um, again, just refer to your cheat sheet and that is step number four. So now when you open your Easy Reader for the very first time, you're gonna come into this view, which is, it defaults to my books. And um, of course you won't have any books. Um, so you'll want to sign into your library first. And you'll see here under manage libraries that I have Bookshare, that's the very first one. Now I've already set up my Bookshare account, but if I hadn't set it up, it would look something like this. And so the very first time 
that you connect Easy Reader to your subscription, your library subscriptions like Bookshare, you're just going to be asked to put those in. Now remember, your Dolphin account and your Bookshare account don't aren't necessarily the same login and user ID, so you need to make sure you have that straight. I'm going to go back though and I'm going to go to Bookshare and um, when I open my Bookshare tab, I, I have a bunch of different choices for finding books and uh, the first one is um, this is my reading list and this is where books go that teachers have assigned, correct Lara? Yes. Now what I didn't know, um, how did teachers differentiate my favorites and test list? Is that something they're indicating when they're assigning books? I didn't know the answer to that. My favorites is uh, you can, like a, the student can, or anyone who's reading a book, oh. I think a little, they just favored it the way you like favorite a song on iTunes. Or okay. Yeah. But so then most of the books go into their test list. I'm not familiar with what test list. Oh, that must've been a reading list that someone Created. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, that's the name of the reading list. Okay. I was like, yeah, sorry. I didn't know that. Okay. So here are where the books are going to go. We've actually created a sub menu here and sorted them. Um, these books have been assigned to me by my teacher. You can see I have lots of American history to read. Um, and once they're assigned, I can click on those, that I button off to the side, if you saw that, and get the book information. Now um, I, I'll be able to download those. And once I download those books, they move to the My Books folder. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. Um, Laura did want to talk about something here. When teachers assign books, there are two ways uh, that, that students receive books. Sometimes um, the titles are assigned directly into the folder. And then other times uh, the teacher assigns the title, right, Laura? Right, so teachers assign books two ways. We have what's called the assign and read feature. It is, you know, the teacher finds the book in our collection and there's a button that says assign and then pulls up the list of students and they pick which student they want to assign the book to and then that's done. They also can create a reading list where they can add multiple books. So say you're gonna create like, you know, eighth grade English you know, for the year and you would then maybe the teacher would add every book that that class is gonna read. You might have you know two books, twenty books, um, as many as you need. So um, the way the system, the way Bookshare and Dolphin kind of interact. Um, so if the books are on a reading list, the student just goes to that my reading list link that uh, she showed you. Um, however, if the teacher assigned it using the assign and read feature, there's no way that they students don't see it. They need to. Um, they just need to know the title and then they search for the title. So the teacher says, okay, I assigned Tale of Two Cities. The student then goes into Dolphin and at the top where you search, just would search and then um, the books would come up and then they would see the download button next to the book the teacher assigned. So students, you know, again, if you're just on the school account, they can only read books that the teacher has assigned. So, you know, they can open their Dolphin app and they could search for Harry Potter there's no button to actually download and read it. They, they can see that it's there, um, but unless it's assigned. So that's where the individual memberships are great because if the kid has that individual membership connected to their, their school account, they can then just search for anything they want to read. Um, yeah, to which is what, we're, oops, sorry, go ahead. That's okay, yeah, to find the book that the teacher has assigned, they, you just have to search for it. Um, we're hoping that in you know, the not so distant future, there'll be another, um, you know, just an easier way to access all the assigned books when the student logs into the app, um, something the, the engineers on, on both sides are, are working on. So yeah, and it's really not that hard. I mean, you might have a couple of iterations of the same title, um, but it's really not that hard. And if it's not the correct iteration that the teacher has assigned, then um, when I showed you before this little download button, the download button just won't be there. And then your, your student will know or your child will know that's not the one that the teacher assigned. So um, if you do have an independent uh, account with Bookshare in addition to a school account, you um, have these other search features like the latest titles, 
Um, so, you know, kind of like your what's new, uh, what's trending under the popular category. So you can see what everybody's reading right now. Um, you can browse by category. So if you're interested in a specific topic, dramas, plays, I bet a lot of people are doing cooking food and wine at this point. <laughs> uh, lots of kids are learning how to cook and do chores. Um, and then of course for teachers, I love the browse by grade feature. So different texts you might find in here. Here's third grade from sea to shining sea. Here's 10th grade. Crisis in the Middle East, active physics. All right, those are nice meaty titles in the 10th grade. So we're gonna just assume that we've found a book that we wanna read or that we've been assigned to read. And this button up at the top, I'm hoping you can see my finger good enough. Oops, that didn't work for me. Can you see what I'm touching right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna touch what we call the side menu button. This is probably the button you're gonna use most in Easy Reader. And then here you have my books. I think I touched my books. Oh no, I, oh yeah, I did. Okay, so I was reading, I'm, I was reading Nuclear Fusion earlier, but maybe let's go into something a little lighter. Um, so uh, Jack Reacher is what I've been looking at. And once you get into a book, now I'm gonna blow this up so you guys can see it much better. I accidentally touched the bookmark, but I do have a bookmark there. And I'm just gonna play it so you can hear it. Moving the bias because Kiva wasn't easy. It was like trying Oops, wrong button. Off the waterbed. So they buried him close to the house, which made sense anyway. The harvest was still a month away and a disturbance in a field. So as you can see, you're seeing sentence highlighting, you're seeing word highlighting. Um, we have auditory feedback, and yes, of course, you can customize all those things. We're gonna show you how to do that in a sec. Um, so for now, hopefully you can see that text right there. Okay, so we're gonna go, um, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, get it looking the way that you want it to look and get it sounding the way that you want it to sound. So um, to do that, I'm gonna press the A icon, and the A icon controls all of my text settings. So um, although I was using a touch screen and I was using the pinch feature to expand uh, my text, I can use the slider, which blows up the text or reduces it depending on what I need. So you can see we just slide that around. Um, we have different fonts in here and I know for our kids with dyslexia, um, parents love and teachers love that we have the open dyslexia, dyslexic font. Um, so maybe I'll turn that on for a second so you can see it. I just tap outside of that to go back to the text if I wanna get a look, but um, I have this pretty big so I'll just get it down a little bit. I have a bookmark on this page and that's why that keeps happening. So um, anyway, I'm going to, I like the way that looks. I don't know about that background color and I'm gonna change that text back because I don't think it comes through really good for you guys. So I'm just gonna go back to the default font and um, I'm going to, I can change my margins, I can adjust line spacing. If um, your student has ocular tracking issues, you might wanna spread that line out or um, uh, the letting in between the letters. So we can choose our color theme. Now we've set a few for you. So we have black with white text and a blue background or a blue highlighter. Um, we have dark blue, a cream background and light blue. But if we don't like any of those things, we can say no theme and we can go down here and we can adjust those colors all by ourselves. So um, if I wanna change the text color to yellow and the background to black and maybe the highlighting to red, whatever, whatever I wanna do there, um, I can change all of those things individually, okay? So I'm gonna just tap to get out of that. And the next thing that you were wondering about, I'm sure, was voices. 
Um, so if I click here, we've got some great voices here in the iPad. Um, just a note, if you're using Android, Easy Reader is built to look the exact same. So don't think that just because I'm using my iPad that yours is gonna look different if you have an Android tablet or an Android phone. Um, all the buttons are in the same place, okay? So I'm using Nikki English here, um, but I can choose from other voices. And as you can see here, I have um, different language voices. I can, I'm gonna sound really smart and pick Martha because I feel more sophisticated when I hear Martha read to me. But um, we have uh, easy readers available in several languages. So this is a good place to say that um, if you have Spanish speaking students or a Spanish speaking child um, and their device is in Spanish, easy reader recognizes that while it's installing and it'll install that correlating version of easy reader um, onto the device. Now, if you have a, a student who's you know, English as a second language, plus has a reading disability, um, dyslexic, whatever. Uh, we see lots of um, Hispanic students in my area uh, where we're giving um, direction and instruction in English, but some of their texts uh, are still provided and then swap that vice versa. So you can go in, if you have a Spanish text, this is very cool. And you can change, oops, wrong one, sorry. Uh, you can change it to that language. So right here, sorry. And MJ, just want to cut in. Someone just asked if you could describe uh, more for someone with a visual impairment. Um, like if you're sure. selecting a certain button. That's I absolutely will, sorry. Okay. Sorry, I forget to do that sometimes. Uh, I did select a button and the button was the speaker button that's located in the upper right hand corner. And before that I was using the A button, which is the controls the text settings and that's also in the upper right hand corner of um, the tablet. And if you're using a phone in that, in that same place. So um, once I tap those those buttons that are located in the upper right. I'm given a dialog box. Um, now I'm back in audio settings and the first option in the list of things that I can change in audio settings was uh, the voices and I've selected Martha who speaks the Queen's English. And um, I can go down to now voice settings, which is the next option in the list and that's another button. In the voice settings list, it allows me to change the rate the pitch, the volume, and I can even test to see what that sounds like. At the very bottom of the dialog box, there's an arrow. Press the play button to test your voice settings. And that's what she says every time. She is a little bit high for me. I'm gonna lower her voice. Press the play button to test your voice settings. There we go, I like it, perfect. So I can just tap um, outside of that dialog box and go back to my book. Okay, so um, next we're going to, again, if we want to read, we just go down to this bottom arrow at the very bottom and push Even play. Even as big as Kiva wasn't easy. It was like trying to wrestle a king-size mattress off the waterbed. All right, now we're going to explore some of the navigation buttons here at the bottom. Um, so we have some that enable you to go back and forward and those are located, the play button is located in the very center of the tablet right above, well I'm in an iOS, I'm in an iPad. So where the home button is on the iPad, the play button is just above that. And then to the right and left of the play button is, um, are the rewind 15 second and fast forward 15 second. Oh, I, I set this different, sorry about that. Um, I set it to browse through my headers. So scratch that, I'm gonna go back here to chapter two where I was. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, chapter two. so chapter two. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna actually head down now to my, um, my uh, book navigation button that's in the lower left-hand corner of my my iPad right now. And um, so I had it set to headings. 
uh, for book na navigation, but there are three options when you open book navigation. So you can go through um, all the headings, which is your first option for navigating um, by the page uh, or um, through bookmarks. And I had it on headings. So the buttons that are next to the play button were taking me through back and forward through some headings. And um, I really just wanted to go back in seconds on that page. So had I had it set on pages, it would have performed differently. So that's how I can navigate through the book. Uh, I can go to the chapters if I have it set um, on the headings tab, or if I change tabs and go to pages, um, I, I can go through that by setting different times if I want to advance or go forward, and then uh, my bookmarks. And this will actually take me through the entire book entire books, books, bookmarks. So we're gonna set a bookmark together in just a second. I'm just introducing you to some of the buttons. We'll do that right now, as a matter of fact. So again, if I wanna leave an open window, all I have to do is uh, touch the book outside of that window and I'm, I'm back in that book. So I'm gonna start reading again. I'm at chapter two. Chapter two. The motel was bigger than Rachel expected. Okay, so I'm doing um, a book report, and this is part of my setting. Reacher was staying in a motel. I want to actually make a note to myself. So if I select the bookmark one time, now I'm pressing a button that's in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. In the left-hand corner, um, we have the um, slide menu button, and then we have our search button to the right of that, and then we have our bookmark button. So I, if I touch it once, it sets a bookmark. If I touch it again, I get an option to either create a text note or I can add an audio note. Setting, he was staying at a motel. And then it's there for me. Setting, he was staying at a motel. I always shout at my voice messages, so they're very loud. No, I'm just kidding. When I record them, I don't. That was a joke. Except for Lara's not even smiling, so I guess it wasn't funny. Um, okay, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to set another bookmark down here. Uh, it's describing it, so I'm going to paint it brown. I'm going to set a bookmark. Description, I'm gonna just type in this one and say done, okay, description. And save is in the upper left-hand corner of the dialog box. So now I have a couple of bookmarks on this page and I, as I move through this page, let's see, I'm gonna start reading from the beginning. Did I not save? Oh, I saved. Hold on, let me do it again. Right, that was weird. So, oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to start here. The motel was bigger than Rachel expected. It was a two-story horse show, a total of 30 rooms. Expected. It was a two-story horse show, a total of 30 rooms, with plenty of parking, but not many slots. Were okay. So I'm going to try this one more time with my bookmark. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. New. All right. I can't see this myself here, so. Save. All right, I'm not sure why I'm not able to set a new bookmark. I'm gonna have to figure that out. It's probably user error on my part, but I successfully set one at the top of the page. What I wanted to show you is, um, as you're reading through the page and there's a bookmark set, you will get a beep, an indicator that um, the book has a bookmark, okay? So I'm gonna pause here. We just did a lot of information in terms of setting uh, you know, setting up the custom preferences and things like that. Um, why don't you 
ask me some questions if you if there's something I didn't cover and yeah, we'll there are some questions in the sure. um, uh, I'll address one. There's a Bookshare one. Someone says, do we have to download both Bookshare and Easy Reader? And I just wanted to stress that Bookshare is just the library. There's nothing to download and you read the books, but um, so like Bookshare is the library and Easy Reader is the mechanism, one of the mechanisms to read the books. So you sign up for a Bookshare account and then you would use an app like Easy Reader to, to read the books on your device. Mm -hmm. And someone asked, is there a cost to the individual for Easy Reader download? No, it is a free app. And someone asked, um, if I'm understanding correctly, it would be best for me as a teacher to assign both school and individual accounts for our students. And yes, that's something we really encourage. That way the students can have a full access to the collection. And also as they uh, transition out of K-12, they will always have that account. Yeah. And if they you know, go to a post-secondary program, it will still be free. Um, if once they're out of the school system and they're no longer a student, they would just switch to a paid account. But that membership will follow them throughout their, their school career, educational career, you know, in, into adulthood. So um, we always say, you know, get them on the school account, get them used to using it, and then introduce uh, the individual membership. Uh, there's two questions about if it works on a Kindle or a Nook. Um, as far as I know, there is no Dolphin app for, no. for Kindle. I know, uh, and it does not work with, there's no apps for Nook or Kindles with Bookshare. At this yeah, point. yeah, um, Easy Reader is a reader, like a Kindle is a reader, so no. Um, competing kind of technologies. Um, okay, so uh, as far as going back around in here, was there anything that people, oh, there was the ding that I was looking for. Um, is there anything that, um, that people didn't see while I was reading a book? Um, we're not going to go super deep because we do want to make sure this is a beginner session. Um, we will probably, based on the, the response that we've gotten, do more of these. <laughs> Obviously, it's a great need and, and lots of people are interested. I have gotten a few messages that people had trouble signing in, which I'm not sure why we expanded our account to accept 500, but um, alas, people have. So if, if you don't have any other questions in terms of navigating, um, I think we covered most everything. Um, there are other libraries. Someone had, I saw the question earlier. Um, so we do work with the world's repositories. Uh, we just have a short list here. But if I wanted to go into manage libraries, you can see here all of the libraries around the world that we partner with. So you can turn those off because, I mean, a lot of these aren't applicable to people in the United States. You can't become members. Uh, but we do work, and so um, I have just turned on Bookshare, Sela, EPUB Books, Project Gutenberg, NLB, and then, of course, the Dolphin Library. And someone's so, asking, um, I believe, to see if the images from the book. Um, there's a setting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about it, how it is in voice right? I, I have a few books that um, have images. Let's go into my nuclear fusion textbook. That's a good example of a book that has a ton of images. Oh, just happened. It's all the bookmarks I tried to set. Okay, I'm going into nuclear fusion. I know you can see my fan spinning. So um, here's a book that has lots of pictures inserted. And I can read. Left, plot in. Capital T, two for D, T, and E, three he Maxwellian plasma, right, plots in. For the interaction of an energetic particle beam of deuterons with a tritium plasma with a Maxwellian energy district. I don't really like her um, reading the math equations. I, I should have stuck with the other voice, but 
Um, there's other books that we, that have images. Let's see. Um, is there a setting you have to turn on to allow the images? No, no. We just, if they're in there, we see them. So um, if I go, if I do a search, let me go into Bookshare. And um, yesterday I was looking at some of the books available. So I'm just going to search for boy in striped pajamas because we're all wearing pajamas right now. I'll just say boy in striped. Okay, so here we have the boy in the striped uh, pajamas. You'll notice the second one is um, the deluxe illustrated edition. And um, so I could download that. I think I already have that one. So let me go back and go to my reading list. Or maybe I didn't download it in there either. Uh, Biscuit Snowy Day. I thought I had it. Oh, here are my favorites. Oh, I haven't downloaded that one either. But um, we can do it. Let's just download it. So I'll go back and search. Okay, go ahead and search. So I'll go to this one. I'm on a pretty fast internet. So it's preparing and it's going to download for me. We'll just answer a question while it does that. Oh, is it possible to... Okay, here's a great question while this is down. Oh, it already did download. That was really fast. Um, but this is a really great question I want to pause for. Sorry, a little confused. I've used this on an iPad, but I'm trying it at home on my laptop. Dolphin Easy Reader is a paid program. Um, there is the, the Easy Reader that is for your that's the full program that's for your laptop or desktop machine um, does come at a cost. I believe it's I want to, it's in the $39 to $49 range. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the pricing for that. So no, the only thing that is free is Easy Reader, the app for um, your Android and iOS devices. We don't have a free solution for desktop or laptops. Um, but anyway, let's go back to our book that opened super fast. I was impressed with that. And let's see, we can get to a new chapter. Let's see, um, we'll go to the first chapter and see if there's any pictures here. Here we go. So, yep, I didn't have to do anything. This is the deluxe illustrated edition of that book and all the pictures are there, bam. Okay, any other, uh, Oh, here's Liz. From my experience with some picture books, they sometimes describe the picture or just simply say image. That That's correct on the only two possibilities I'm describing for images. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how it's tagged. Um, you want to speak to this? Yeah, we've been really working on that, of having every image in every book um, with a proper image description. Um, but you, as you can imagine, that's a a time consuming and um, you know, tedious task. So you know, we're, that's our goal is to have 100% uh, image descriptions. But you know, in the meantime, sometimes it will just say image. A lot depends. We get our books two ways. Um, the, the digital file from the publisher, um, that's the best way because then it's all the formatting is preserved and so forth. If the publishers will not give us the digital file, we actually buy the hard copy of the book and chop the spine off and scan each page. Um, and that's, you know, again, a time consuming process. And you know, with scanners, sometimes it kind of jumbles things around and the scanning um, is not able to retain images. So the books that we have entered by scanning them into our collection, unfortunately don't have the images. Um, but Publishers are getting a lot better with uh, providing image descriptions in the file, but um, if they're not, you know, that's something we're doing on our end and yeah, hope to have them all. Yeah, and from our perspective, um, if it's in there, Easy Reader will read it. So it, it, it's more related to the text and whether it's been tagged and captioned, but um, if it is in there, Easy Reader will read that, yes. 
Okay, um, I, I think we answered most of the questions here. I figured that was the case. Yeah, what is the difference between read now versus download? Oh, well, uh, you only get the read now button after you've downloaded it. So um, you notice when I first went to that page, I had to select download. Um, it just had that cloud with the arrow down button. Like I'll show you here in another book. So I'm selecting info. So notice that it says download when it's finished. Um, oh, sorry, I, di I didn't switch my, sorry about that. Let me just go back. So this is in my assigned reading list and I select info. Um, you see that little cloud can I blow that up? No. Um, there's a little download button. Well, when it's finished, it'll say read now. So I can launch it already. I don't have to leave this area, go back to my books, which is where it placed it. So um, once a book is downloaded, it's found in that menu item, my books, and all my books are here. So I can scroll and move through that. Okay. I'm going to go back here because we've kind of gone past our, well, we, we were shooting for 30 to 45 minutes, but um, we, we did go an hour, but there was an awful lot of people and a lot of questions. So I am going to, right now, if you have any questions, technical questions that we were, um, that we couldn't get to just because of time, uh, or other product questions that we didn't answer. Um, my, my guy, my boss, Steve Bennett, heck of a man, um, has volunteered to take those questions right now. Um, and if there's a lot of them, you can, it's, it's, uh, it's going on nine o'clock in, in the UK, so he might not get to them all. And I am MJ at Your Dolphin. So you can also email me right now and uh, Lara with yours. Oh, you want to type it in? Go ahead. It's Lara R at Benetech, B-E-N-E-T-E-C-H dot org. I'll type that in. There you go. Uh, did Lara say that her presentation would be available? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I, I know I got some notes from you guys saying that people were locked out. We're not sure what happened there. We, we were told that we could accept up to 500 people and we had nearly that many. So we're going to follow up by sending you the recording, um, sending you the cheat sheet and, um, sending you our email addresses and Lara's, um, slides, right? Mm -hmm. or P a PDF of the slides, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Okay, so that's it. Uh, anything else from you, Lara? No, just thanks everyone for attending and, you know. Um, yeah, um, thank you. Better. Yeah, thanks for mm -hmm. both of us. Uh, we, again, we're going to look at this and see if we want to do like the next level. Um, we might look at doing that, but we're definitely going to repeat this 101 um, format again the next one is Tuesday at 9 or um, wait yeah at 9 a.m. Pacific time and 12 uh, or 9 a.m. Pacific time and 12 p.m. Eastern time so if you want to come again or if you know somebody that can benefit we'll have our webinar tool fixed and we should be able to have more people um, in in by then Again, wherever you are, we hope that you'll stay inside, um, stay safe, stop the spread, and um, you know, amuse yourself somehow. Read a lot of books. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs>